Okay, guys, this Neo robot, this home robot is going to be one of the most groundbreaking things I think we've ever seen in our lives. The future's now, old man. Yeah, so there's a company called 1X Technologies that recently unveiled, like fully unveiled, like a robot that's humanoid that's running on AI for domestic use specifically which makes this the very first consumer-ready model of its kind aimed at transforming everyday home life, whether it be like bringing in your groceries, handling chores, providing companionship, and basically just assisting people to free up their time so they can do other stuff instead of like basic day-to-day -day tasks. It was launched for pre-order on October 28th of 2025, literally Tuesday, October 28th. And this is a pretty massive shift from what we've seen robotics typically being used for, which at least for me, I've seen more robots being used in warfare or manufacturing or things like that. But I have not seen anything that's like, I mean, you've seen some stuff developed by different companies, but not like this, dude. Now, this thing was backed by a bunch of major investors, including OpenAI. And while it's not fully autonomous yet, Neo is apparently going to be learning from real world interactions, including optional human teleoperation to improve over time it positions this thing to be kind of like toddler like in the beginning but as this thing continues to do tasks around your house it's going to learn and it's going to become smarter now this thing launched like i said on october 28th and there has been a ton of people seeing these videos and they're like yo what the hell is happening this is going to be one of two things. It's either going to be groundbreaking technology that's going to revolutionize the human experience and free us up to do a million other things, or it's going to smother us in our sleep. Who knows? I guess we'll find out. Anyway, 1X Technologies, which was formerly known as Haloti Robotics, was founded in 2014 and is a Norwegian-American robotics firm with a mission to build safe, intelligent humanoids for homes and commercial spaces like logistics and security. Now, they rebranded back in 2022, and the company raised over $100 million in backers, including OpenAI's startup fund, Samsung, EQT Ventures, and a bunch of others. Now, the CEO, I think his name is Bert Bornich, emphasizes Neo as the, quote, first step towards a more abundant future, evolving from research prototypes to a sellable product that is actually marketable that people can use domestically. Now, this thing was unveiled as a beta, like the beta version of this thing was unveiled in 2024 as a prototype pilot for home trials and focused on walking and basic manipulation of objects and things like that. So it could like take the trash out, maybe do the dishes or maybe set dishes in the sink. And then by February of 2025, Neo Gamma introduced with hardware upgrades because it was quieter, better reliability and AI improvements for tasks like vacuuming and grocery handling. Then by June of 2025, there were updates on the AI that it uses called Redwood AI, and then the 1X world model to enhance its ability to learn in varying home settings. By October of 2025, this thing has fully launched for consumers with pre-orders already available. They've even got payment plans, apparently, if you can't afford the initial like upfront purchase cost. Now, they're trying to market this thing as being different from its competitors like the Tesla Optimuses or Boston Dynamic Atlases by prioritizing, quote, empathy and design for homes, soft exteriors, voice first interactions and gradual autonomy over raw power. Now, the company so far has said that this thing was built for versatility, including like utility for chores, companionship and interaction, along with seamless integration into your personal life. So that way, it's almost as if there's just another person living in your house. When it arrives in its box, it shows up to your place with basic autonomy, including knowing how to navigate rooms, self-charging, because it's powered by 1X's Redwood AI, which is like a generalist model that handles perception, reasoning, and motion. And it built in large language model for conversations. So it can like talk to you and you can have a conversation with it. Kind of like, you know, Google Pixel or any of these other AI, like Alexa, right? Now, some of the chores 
that can run on automation. It can handle like mundane tasks like folding laundry, putting away dishes, organizing shelves, tidying rooms, watering plants, loading and unloading appliances. Users can even create chore lists and schedules via the Neo app. That's gonna be something you can download and then Neo can execute these autonomously once it learns how to do it because it learns with AI. This is so weird to even be talking about because this is just the craziest thing. This is literally like something out of like a science fiction film. Like, what's that movie? I can't remember the name. It's like Star Trek or something. It's like Star Wars, like robots that can think for themselves and like learn autonomously and like do things without being told to do them. I don't know, this is, this is crazy. I can't believe that this is something that's coming around in, like while I'm here on this planet. It's hard to wrap your head around. Especially being somebody that grew up without cell phones. Seeing this is nuts. Apparently this thing can walk at 1.4 meters per second and can jog up to 6.2 meters per second. It can climb stairs, it can open doors, it can fetch items, it can turn lights on and off. The hands have 22 degrees of freedom for delicate grips if they got to handle like things that are breakable, like glasses or dishes and things like that. It starts off with pre-trained skills for new tasks. And then it's got this thing called expert mode, which lets 1X human teleoperators remotely guide Neo via a VR headset. This enables, quote, human in the loop approaches to data collection to help train the AI, which ultimately will make the AI smarter so that eventually it can act autonomously without any human teleoperators. It also performs self-maintenance. So it plugs itself in for quick charging using a magnet system, I think it is. It just like connects to the side and it just like remotely charges or kind of remotely charges. A quick six minute charge yields up to one hour of runtime. So for every six minutes of charging, you can get one hour of runtime. I don't know what the maximum battery capacity of this thing is though. they didn't really say anything about that now in addition to this thing being smart already it's got voice activation no remotes at all no remotes it's also got a bluetooth speaker for music and app controls for monitoring and scheduling because you can schedule you can make a schedule for this thing like as if it were your your butler your maid or something it's got conversational ai it can engage in natural talks answer questions on recipes history it can share jokes stories it can play games with you dude that is so crazy it can remember like preferences you have like if you like two stevia in your coffee instead of one and it does that by visual slash audio memory it also has emotional cues it's got like these earrings around it that glow to show status, whether it's got low battery, focused attention. It responds to body language and tone for contextual help. It also adapts to the personal user, to the end user, like assisting with mobility challenges or entertaining kids. Neo is five foot six inches tall, 66 pounds, and it's got like a soft fabric, like nylon suit that comes in tan, gray, and dark brown currently they may end up customizing it later if this thing takes off and they think that it's going to make some good money it's got tendon driven actuators that mimic human muscles for fluid low energy movements and it has no exposed metal for a warm homey vibe so that way it doesn't look like something out of a tool music video there's a bunch of like demos and demonstrations that have been shown they had like a full-on like almost 10 minute video demonstrating some of the abilities and capabilities of this thing including greeting odors like tidying counters folding clothes relaxing on the couch opening doors for people taking cups to the sink for you whatever you need v vacuuming carrying groceries in from your car making tea this thing can do pretty much anything I would imagine it's got to learn because it's like AI. It's going to start off like a toddler. And then as it learns, it gets better at these tasks and these day-to-day -day taskers. It can even make jokes and tell stories, apparently. <laughs> this is just nuts, man. This is going to be the craziest thing. Nuts. It can lift 154 pounds. It can carry 55 pounds. And each arm, I guess, is capable of carrying 18 pounds by the way it looks. Either that or each arm weighs 18 pounds. I'm not 100% sure. So as far as degrees of freedom, it's got, like we said before, 22 degrees of freedom per hand, 7 degrees of freedom per arm, 3 degrees of freedom for its neck, 2 degrees for its spine, and 6 degrees of freedom per leg. Okay, so this thing has a runtime of 4 hours, and then after it's getting close to, you know, having a battery die, it can charge up for 6 minutes for 1 hour of runtime. 
And it does that autonomously. Again, it does it without you having to tell it to. It just rolls over to where its charging station is, attaches the magnet charger to its body. I think it's like on its hip or something. And it just charges. It's got compute and sensors. It's got NVIDIA Jetson Thor 2070 FP4 T flops, four beam forming mics, three speakers, fish eye cameras, and IMUs for balance. You can connect to this thing via Wi Fi, Bluetooth, and it's got 5G. Wow. It runs quieter than a fridge at approximately 22 decibels. It's also got a soft lattice polymer body, no pinch points and is soft to the touch. All right, so pricing and availability for this thing. Apparently you can drop 200 bucks as a refundable deposit, which secures you a spot as of October 29th of 2025. But if you wanna purchase one outright, like in its entirety, it's $20,000, which includes priority 2026 delivery. There's also a subscription that you can sign up for that's $499 a month, which is flexible, which, has like ongoing support slash updates for this thing, which I would imagine once these things come out, you're going to want to make sure that you have that ongoing support and you can guaranteed have updates for this thing because there's going to be bugs. It's going to be buggy. You know what I'm saying? There's going to be quill. Yeah. So yeah, so $20,000 to outright purchase this thing. I don't know if they have payment plans, probably not, but there's going to be a subscription associated with like maintaining updates and maintaining support for this thing of $499 per month. It's going to start shipping in 2026 in the United States. As far as international ship dates, that's still to be determined. There's going to be a one-year standard warranty for these things, but they're also going to provide teleoperation sessions included for learning to help teach the AI how to do basic stuff. Apparently, early adopters are going to get priority, but the high cost targets affluent users or those valuing time savings, which is going to be mostly like fairly like middle slash upper class is the people that are going to probably, you know, people that are making $250,000 a year or more are probably going to be the target audience for this. Because it estimates that 10% of Americans spend $200 or more on cleaning help per month. So not many people. I don't make enough money to pay for a maid. I don't know about you guys. Yeah, this is going to be crazy, man. Yeah, Neo operates autonomously for routine tasks using the Redwood AI for navigation, object recognition, and execution. You're going to be able to schedule things via the app, like schedule tasks that you want it to do. It learns from every session that it operates in. And as Neo conducts tasks, it actually analyzes the data from it. And that trains the fleet wide AI of all of these robots in everyone's homes. So like all the daily taskers that these things are going to be conducting across the planet and the United States, the AI is going to be learning in every household. And then that shares it with all the AI in every other one of the robots. Jesus, dude. As far as safety is concerned, it's soft, deformable body absorbs impacts. Since it's got the low inertia actuators, it prevents harm to people. And it's got AI safeguards to block dangerous actions like hot, sharp objects and things like that. Oh, now here's something that people are going to be curious about. The eyes, are they going to be watching you? You know, like it's whatever it sees, where's that data going? Where's that video going? Is that going to server somewhere? Is the government collecting it? You know, apparently the end user is going to be able to control consent for each section. It can blur faces and objects and it can set no-go zones where like there's like areas in the house or the home that you don't want Neo to go to. Like the bathroom, for example. If you don't want Neo going in the bathroom while you're showering or something, you can just say, hey, that bathroom is a no-go area. Apparently, data delays allow review slash deletion before training use, and there's no unauthorized access, including end-to-end -end encryption. That's another thing that's weird. Like, what if somebody hacked into your Neo? I mean, I know they say end-to-end -end encryption, there's no unauthorized access, but if this thing has a signal, a Wi-Fi signal or Bluetooth, it can be hacked. There's no such thing as unhackable in this world. So that's a weird thing that they're going to have to deal with it at some point. I don't know how they're going to deal with it, but they probably have a very massive support team, I would imagine. Because imagine if somebody hacked into your Neo and could, like, do weird things with it. Like, watch you in your home or 
you know, cause mischief in your house. I don't know. I'm just saying these are things people are going to be concerned about because when you got a robot operating inside of your house that you don't necessarily know, like most people aren't going to understand how all this stuff works. They're just going to be like talking to it, like, and hoping that it works because like, you're not going to be an AI expert. You're not going to be a robotics expert. You're just going to be like, Hey bro, I just want somebody to help me carry my groceries and fold my laundry and like feed my cats and feed my dogs and like get the paper from the the curb or whatever, or wash the dishes. They're not going to understand like all the in-depth specifics about robotics or AI. There's going to be bugs. And they, I think that the company understands that there's going to be some bugs for this thing when it first comes out because nothing comes out like perfect off the shelf, especially at, at this level of complexity. There's going to be so much involved with it. But there's a lot of reviews coming out of this thing already that people are saying that this thing's going to be super valuable. And there's people on all sides of the fence. There's people that think this is going to be a good thing. There's people that think this is going to be a bad thing. Obviously, you can decide that for yourself. But there's definitely a lot of jokes about surveillance bots <laughs> or wife replacements. <laughs> what? Wife replacements. There's literally people on X that are calling this a, quote, wife replacement. Why? Because it can make you sandwiches? Like, what is what does that even mean? It's not going to replace a fleshy creature like Jesus. A surveillance bot's funny too. Yeah, the CIA might hack into your robot and try to see what you're doing. I don't know, man. That's so that's so crazy, dude. Wife replacement. That is the most wild thing I've heard, I think, so far about this. Yeah, the only real concerns and criticisms I've seen so far is like the cost barrier, because obviously it's like twenty thousand dollars, which means that it's gonna be, you know, your average person's not gonna be able to afford this. Like, cause twenty thousand dollars is what a lot of people spend on cars. And that's like a lot of money for a car for a lot of your average middle class to low income people. They're not going to be buying even a car that costs that much, let alone having a robot that sits in your house that can't get you to and from work for 20,000. So like this is going to definitely be like a middle class, upper middle class and like the upper class uh, type thing, especially with the subscriptions, which they have talked about the subscriptions dropping down from four ninety nine a month to lower premiums, potentially, depending on like how much investment they get. Some of the autonomy gaps, the, the teleoperation reliance feels like, quote, outsourcing to India remotely, according to some people. Then there are some ethical issues. Some people are concerned about potential for data misuse of this thing or over-dependence or unequal access to, to it based on like how much it costs. And then some people are praising this thing for the fact that it looks like it's got humanoid looks, so it's like comfortable for familiarity, but some people are questioning its ability to execute tasks efficiency, unlike specialized bots that are designed for specific tasks like the Roomba, for example. Now, if you want to look at like some comparisons, the Neo, like I said, is $20,000 for shipping in 2026. Uh, the Optimus Tesla, which is a hybrid, a home hybrid robot as well as approximately $20,000 for the pilot, 2026 pilot versions. And then they've got another robot that's called Figure One, which doesn't have any pricing yet that I can see. Then you've got Boston Dynamics Atlas, which is not for consumer purchase yet. And then the Digit, which is commercial only right now. And I don't see any prices on that yet. Anyway, the field of robotics and AI technology is certainly heating up. And I mean, no matter how much you want to fight it, like this is the future. This is the future, old man. So it makes me very uncomfortable thinking about robots in the house. And I certainly can't afford one right now myself. But I don't know if I'd want a robot in my house doing stuff. I might feel more comfortable just have like hiring a person to do it. But Definitely a cool option if you if you have the money for it and you want to have some like AI robot cleaning your house. It's definitely like if once it gets to a point where it becomes cheaper and it gets more efficient and the AI improves to a point where like you're not concerned about weird stuff like it dropping glasses on the floor or things like that. I think we could be on to something because having robots to clean people's homes or to do daily tasks like fold laundry is going to free you up to do a lot of time where your workflow can get like focused, where you can do more stuff, where you can stream, where you can work the stock market, where you can garden, do the things you enjoy more because you've got more time for that stuff rather than the menial like chores. So I don't know. I'd be curious to hear what all of you out there think, because this is crazy. This is one of the craziest things that we've talked about in a while. But yeah, let us know in the comments. If somebody gave you one, would you take it? And or 
if you could afford one of these, would you want to buy one to have in your house? So anyway, I'd be curious to hear what everyone thinks. All right, guys, that's it for the daily roll-up for today. I appreciate you watching the video all the way through. Believe it or not, it does actually help support the channel and YouTube's algorithm. It gives it a good massage. Another way you can help support the channel, if you're interested, is you can like this video, you can leave a comment in the comment section below, or you can share this video with your friends. So please let us know what you thought about this video in the comments below, and we will see you in the next video.